Welcome again to Sharing Your Stories. My name is Federico, and this time I'm bringing to Julie Curtis, one of those women that can show you that age is just a number. But more than that, she's one of the most humorous women I have ever met. I met her in Toastmaster like a year and a half ago, but even those saddest stories that you could experience, she can make them real humorous stories. And this time, I would like that she could tell us some about her tricks, some of our, her experiences, and how she became a stand-up comedian. Julie, can you tell us something how this journey started? The journey started when I was seven years old. I heard my first joke in school, and I rushed to my mother to tell it. And my mother put me down. She told me that is not funny. And besides, ladies don't tell jokes like that. I just did not know that a joke depends on audience. I believed I was not funny. And it took me 70 more years to try again. So I was almost 77 when I discovered that I have some humor and I can make laugh my audience uh, at a storytelling event and I loved it. I loved when people laughed and so I decided to study how to make audience laugh when I want it, not by chance. And I went to comedy workshops, one after other, a whole year, until I had the courage to go out to clubs. And how did you try the second time? Because it was after 70 years. How that happened, Julie? <laughs> I have been in Toastmaster for years. And I went to be judge in City Crier Club. And the bank director came on scene. And he was a humorous contestant. And he began to, he came dressed up like a banker. Very uh, dressed up. And suddenly, he lost his trousers. And while we looked there, he lost his vest and his cravat, and he remained in jogger suit. And we found it so funny that I decided when I speak about two different works I had, I could also take out a t-shirt. And I took out my t-shirt on theater uh, platform. Of course, there was another t-shirt under it. But it seemed so funny to the audience, they begin to laugh. And when they begin to laugh, I begin to become playful. And more playful I become, more they laughed. That is how I discovered first. And what would you tell or to the, let's say to the audience that is younger, that they think that changes are not possible? What would you tell to these people? I don't tell them anything or if I tell, I tell things like um, in polar, pol I have pol polite, polite beginnings, like I am single, ready to mingle, but not with you, not with you, who knows? That is one way they make love. And when we are in Toastmasters, I tell them, you know what? Why I came to Toastmasters? No. And that is a true, true story. 
44 years ago, I came to Toastmaster to find a man. And I am still looking. So, all, all Toastmasters laugh usually. And do you think that people can change and be, and be as courageous as you, as you? Or do you think that some people cannot be funny? What do you think about this, Julie? I think that we all have uh, funny bones. We all have something in us. We just have to learn how to use it, how to develop and have the courage to try. I went out to 77 clubs at the end, to us 2011, 12, 13. And at the beginning, we have two, three, four laughter, and we are very proud. And as it goes, and we go tell the same stories, and then take out the stories, they don't get laugh, and try new stories, that get laugh. At the end, I had 36 laughter in the same time. Almost all the time, people laughed. Because all I have left, rep repeating again and again the jokes which worked, were the one they got. And besides, more you have a confidence, that is very important. In uh, joke telling, more you have a confidence when you tell, better it works. And if someone would like to start or check something, like what would you advise to the people? Where they can start? They start to be Toastmaster and they tell a lot of table topics on the spot because uh, comedy has to feel like it is instantaneous. It is not. We, we learn every word, in fact, because every word plays counts. But it has to look like you just discovered and tell it on the spot. And that you learn a lot of table topics in it. And, for example, what did you learn that was different between the French humor where you used to live and the British humor in these days. How did you adapt to these differences? I am not so sure in France. I had only one time big success, this humor, and I believe it was a error almost when I spoke about my nose. I spoke about how I almost cut my nose one time because I believed that after my first divorce that that is why no man looks at me because my nose is too long. And I told that story to an audience and they laughed and laughed and laughed. But all other jokes, and they are most of the time self-depreciating jokes, I told in England. And if you would like that some people can get in contact with you, where would you advise people to know more about you or know about your experiences, Julie? I have a blog, which is called Competent Communicator which has most of my videos of the stories I told and the comedy uh, performances I did. And I have now also a blog which is called Pathway Experience about pathway and experience of Zoom and so on. So as we can see, Julie, you have done a lot of changes. And what was the greatest change of performing a joke or a humorous speech online? Uh, 
I think it is still easier, or it was easier, to tell it with the whole body. Then, uh, but you can tell also online. The thing is to have confidence and to see the others. I really want the others to unmute themselves so I can hear their laughter. Because the worst thing it happened to me, and it happened once, I told a story about my life, a true story, about my cataract operation, and it was a very nice joke in the middle. And because it was an echo, I asked uh, my sergeant of arm to mute me, to mute not me, to mute the audience. So, I did not hear them laughing. And because I didn't hear them laughing, I continued to tell without waiting the laughter to go away. So, it is important to be in gallery view when you tell a joke, in Zoom at least, mm -hmm. and see the audience reacting. Because the audience is more important in a, a humorous uh, tale than in a storytelling without humor or in a speech. Thank you very much, Julie. Do you have any final thoughts that you would like to share with the audience? Yes, it is never too late to begin. <laughs>